Welcome to today's lecture on deep learning. Before we can start to get into the models and algorithms of deep learning, we want to make sure that we're all on the same page regarding the mathematical preliminaries. In this video, we will start with linear algebra. So most of the concepts will all probably already be familiar to you, but some things may be new. Well, um, let's get quickly over this and um, let's look into this lecture. Well, in deep learning, we represent everything in terms of numbers. And, well, one way to do so is the, by the use of scalars. Well, the temperature in Palo Alto is 52 degrees Fahrenheit. 52 is a scalar. Now, say you're interested in um, the temperature, not in Fahrenheit, but in degrees Celsius. Um, then the formula C equals 5 divided by 9 times f minus 32 would be a way to do this calculation and get Q the temperature in Celsius instead of Fahrenheit. Now, this um, simple equation has several scalars. Well, obviously 5, 9 and 32 are scalar values, right? However, also C and F are scalars. However, they're not uh, determined, but they're variables. Uh, so they represent um, unknown scalar values that we can set. Now, such variables uh, typically come from um, sort of a set. So basically, if you say x element r, that means that x can take any value on the real line. Or if we say x and y, element 0 and 1, that basically means that um, both x or y can take um, a val one of two values, so either 0 or 1. So this is the same as saying x element 0 and 1 and y element 0, 1. Yeah? So it's shorthand notation. Vectors are a way to um, sort of put scalars into a list. So vector x, which is, for example, here element r, the real numbers, to the dimension n, is a list of n scalars, where each of those scalars is a real number. And we, by convention, we typically represent vectors as column vectors. So um, we would basically write all the um, n individual scalars, x1 through xn, on top of each other. And each xi is the ith entry or element of this vector. And there's a second way to index the elements, that's by using the bold um, letter, which is the notational convention for vectors, whereas this, um, the um, cursive or italic letter x, which is the uh, notational convention for the scalar. So if we use the vector um, notation, then we would put this into square brackets and index it, um, uh, put the index outside the square bracket here. But both of these things um, mean the same thing. Now, um, as I already said, vectors by conventions are columns. So in order to obtain a row, um, we would typically would do so by transposing a column vector. For example, x transpose is now a row vector. Now a matrix has one additional dimension. So it has a number of rows and columns. And each entry uh, of the matrix is a scalar and has two different indices indexing the row and the column. So basically the elements, um, a, i, j, 
we can again use the notation for scalars together with the row and column indices or the notation for matrices which are the uppercase bold letters in square brackets with um, these indices for row and column. The shape of this matrix um, we either write into uh, parentheses m comma n or m times n which means that the matrix A has m rows and n columns and if the number of rows and the number of columns are equal then we call A a square matrix. Again we can use the transpose uh, to do the transpose operation where um, what this operation does it basically replaces the element in the ith row and column with um, column and row. So basically A12 in the original matrix which is in the first row and second column would be placed in the second row and first column and so on and so forth. Tensors are denoted with capital letters again and without the serifs, uh, so sans serif um, letters. The serifs are the little uh, things here, yeah? so they don't, they don't have this. Um, and for example, images are third order tensors. So tensors can have an arbitrary number of dimensions. Vectors have one dimension, matrices have two dimensions and tensors can have an arbitrary number of dimensions where um, basically the order of the tensor is um, the number of dimensions. So a third order tensor has three different axes and an image for example is such a third order tensor which has axes correspond to the height and the width. So if we specify the first two indices of an image then we get a single pixel. However, pixel um, is represented by three different numbers. So there is, uh, it's still a vector of length three corresponding to the R, the G, B, G and the B channels. And um, so basically x, i, j, k would, in this image would correspond to um, the value of the kth channel in row i and column j of the image. A second way to um, index an image or um, is again by using this um, square bracket notation here. Now tensors can have arbitrary number of dimensions so obviously vectors are a special case of a tensor being first order tensors and matrices are second order tensors. A so-called element wise operation is an operation over tensors um, that produces um, a result that will have the same shape as um, the original inputs. For example, if we add two matrices A and B, which both have the same shape M times N, then we perform an element-wise addition over these two matrices. A plus B is an operation that produces a matrix where each entry is the sum over the ith and jth entry of the matrix A with the i's and jth entry of the matrix B. Now note that the matrix multiplication is not an element-wise um, operation. However, the so-called Hadamard product or element-wise product of A and B um, is the equivalent, is um, element-wise uh, multiplication which um, A 
Hadamard product is denoted by this dot in a circle times b uh, produces a matrix where the ijth entry is well the product between the ijth entry in a and the ijth entry in b reduction um, it basically is a way to uh, reduce the, the, the number of dimensions in the matrix it's for example a sum is a reduction uh, operation so if you take an m by n matrix a and uh, calculate the sum then over the values the matrix a is reduced to a single scalar right so the sum reduces any tensor in this case a two a, a second order tensor or matrix along all its axes uh, to a scalar um, of course we can also reduce um, along individual axes only for example if we uh, write the matrix A uh, in form of its row vectors AI transpose and we use the transpose here because um, we don't want column but row vectors then um, the result is uh, a row vector C transpose which is equal to the sum over all the row vectors of A. So the individual entries are basically sum over I, um, AI and then the corresponding entry in C. So this is the first entry, um, this is the second entry and this is the nth entry where N is the number of entries in C or the number of columns in A. The dot product is a reduction operation over two um, different vectors. So given two vectors x and y which are both element rd, their dot product is denoted by x transpose y um, or we use these um, angular brackets uh, to denote the, the uh, same thing. So both of these things denote the dot product between two column vectors. Then this is defined as the sum over from i equals 1 to d, the product over the corresponding entries of x and y. Now the result of this again is a scalar. So it's a, this is a reduction operation. Matrix vector product similarly is a reduction operation just that instead of taking two vectors we take a matrix and a vector. And the matrix A needs to have the same number of columns as X um, has entries. And then we write the matrix vector product as AX and this is the same as basically saying we take all the row vectors of A which we denote by A the index of the uh, row transpose uh, times X and then the result of this is the dot product um, of this row vector or the, the vector of dot products of the row vectors. Um, so again each of those is a scalar and the, res the, the result of this is um, a vector. So this reduces basically A from, um, from two dimensions uh, to a um, vector. And the result is r to the power of m, so a vector of length m. Based on the dot product we can also define matrix. Matrix multiplies. Um, again this is as we said not an element wise operation but basically if we have two matrices A where A has uh, n rows and k columns and B has k rows and m 
columns, so the k matches, so the number of columns in A and the number of rows in B match, then we can define their um, product, or we can also write them A in terms of its row vectors and B in terms of its column vectors, then we can write their um, multiplication as the matrix C, which is equals to A times B. Um, and the result of this is a matrix that has the dot products of the corresponding row vectors of A and column vectors of B. So the ijth entry of this matrix matrix multiplication C is the dot product of the ith row of A and the jth column of B. Now in deep learning we have to train our models and we do so by optimizing an objective and these objectives are typically um, expressed in terms of norms. So for example if we want to minimize the distance between predictions and the ground truth observations for our training data that is represented by a norm. So if y is the ground truth and y hat is a prediction then what we want to minimize is um, the norm between the difference between these two. Or if we want to um, learn a representation for our data, so this is a form of unsupervised learning where we want to learn vector representations uh, for words, products, news articles, uh, so really any kind of data. Um, such that the distance between similar items is minimized and the distance between dissimilar items is maximized, we again um, would represent these distances in terms of norms. Now, what is a norm? A norm is a function that takes, uh, is written as basically typically with these um, two bars here on the either side, it takes its input which is a vector and maps it to a scalar. And this satisfies uh, the following things. The first thing is that it's non-negative and it's equal to zero if and only if x equal to the zero vector. But the zero vector is a vector that has only zero entries. Yeah. And because I cannot um, use my pen to, to write bold, I put a little arrow on top of these vectors here. Second, if I take a scalar and multiply it by a vector, then the norm of this um, vector scaled by this uh, scalar alpha equals to the product of the absolute value of the scalar and the norm of the vector. Third, um, norms have to fulfill the triangle inequality which says that the norm of the sum of two vectors is smaller or equal to the sum of the individual norms. And this of course has to hold for all vectors x and y and scalars alpha. In machine learning we don't use any norm but typically the most frequent norms are the L1 norm um, of a vector, which we denote by this uh, little one here, uh, which equals to the sum over the absolute values of the entries of this uh, vector. Similarly, the L2 norm, which is the, um, equal to the square root of the sum of squares of the entries of this vector. And both of these are special cases of a P norm which is defined as the, um, the one over pth power over the sum over the absolute values uh, of the vector to the power of p. And basically if we set p to two, then we get the square root here and we get a square here and the absolute value doesn't matter. So this is uh, 
basically p equals 2 is the L2 norm and p equals 1, so we get 1 over 1, the um, power goes away and we are left with the sum of the absolute values, we get uh, this norm here. In the limit, as we would get, let uh, p go to infinite, we would get um, the so-called max norm or infinite norm, which is the maximum absolute um, value of any entry in the um, vector. And again, 1 and 2 norms are special cases of the p norm, and the infinite norm is the limit of the p norm as p tends to infinity. And note that we do require p larger or equal to 1 uh, because as soon as um, p takes a smaller value than 1, the triangle inequality wouldn't hold anymore and this would not be a proper norm anymore. So this is the smallest possible value of p. Now, in principle, um, we can also define norms on matrices. In fact, um, you can actually define vector spaces where the vectors are matrices. So uh, vectors don't actually have to be uh, just vectors of, of n numbers in R to the n, but there are other vector spaces. But of course, the, and uh, one such norm would be the Frobenius norm. Um, so the Frobenius norm, um, it's probably easiest to think about it as uh, basically an, an equivalent to the L2 norm in vectors, where we basically take the matrix and ignore its shape and just interpret it as a flat vector So um, and take the L2 norm of that. So we basically just take the sum of squares of all the entries in the matrix X and take the square root of that. So this is already the end of our um, lecture on linear algebra. We introduced scalars, vectors, matrices and tensors as sort of the basic mathematical objects that we use to represent the numbers in linear algebra and of course in deep learning. And well, vectors generalize scalars because they are basically lists of scalars and matrices generalize vectors, they are so uh, basically so to say, lists of vectors um, and scalars, vectors and matrices and tensors, um, they have a different number of, of axes. Basically, scalars have zero axes um, because they're just a single value. Vectors have a single axis. Matrices have two axes and tensors have an arbitrary number of axes, which means that all of these are actually space, uh, special cases of tensors. And while well, we can do reduction operations, for example, by taking the sum over the mean along uh, um, specified axes of any tensor, producing a tensor of reduced order or dimension. And element-wise, um, Multiplication um, of two matrices is called the Hadamard product. Element-wise operations do not change the order or the shape. And now this Hadamard product, we also said, is different from the matrix multiplication, which actually changes the shape of the matrix and performs a form of reduction. And in deep learning, we often work with norms and most prominently the L1 norm or the L2 norm for, for vectors and the Frobenius norm for matrices. And both of and all of these are um, special cases of the LP norm. Yeah? And with this, um, I want to um, quit uh, this particular lecture on linear algebra. And next, uh, we will look at differential calculus in order to um, give us the tools that we need to solve our, um, our optimization problems in deep learning. And then 
we have all the things that we need in order to start and look at our first um, machine learning algorithm. So see you next time. Bye bye.